looks dangerous. It is very dangerous. This is possibly the most dangerous story we've ever filmed. Fire. It didn't go off. We have a live grenade. We cannot leave this bunker until we deal with the situation. Let me guess, it involves a grenade. You're like a mind reader. Yes, it totally does. Pop quiz, Hotshot. What would you do if someone threw one of these at you? Why, you kiss your ass goodbye. That is one solution. Another solution favored by Hollywood movie action heroes, pull out a gun and shoot it out of the air. And that is where I think we need to begin. Okay. It's a standard action movie move. To protect yourself from an incoming grenade, you take it out midair, where one of three things can happen. It explodes safely, it's rendered inert, or it's sent back from whence it came. Now, when it comes to shooting objects out of midair, that's a sport actually called trap shooting or skeet shooting. I think it's this way. Pull. And when you want to do that in the Bay Area, Pull. you come here to the Coyote Valley Sporting Clay. You must be Dave. Our teacher today is Dave Raydu. Pull. He's been an instructor for 16 years, and he's going to teach Jamie and I how to rid the world of the scourge of clay pigeons. It would be an understatement to say we've fired a lot of guns in the course of doing this show. You'll come across. Over the years, we've fired pistols, rifles, cannons. We fired from moving cars at moving cars. I'm feeling pretty shot up. We've even fired bullets at other bullets. But this time, we're trying to hit a moving target in midair. Pull. Uh, we were close, but not close enough. <laughs> Training on clay pigeons so that hopefully we can hit a grenade. Pull. If they can't even hit a moving target, then the myth falls at the first hurdle. Pull. And at first, it's not as easy as Hollywood would have us believe. Yeah, I was a little uh, behind it. But they've got a great teacher. Pull. Nice got shot. It. Fantastic. Very nice shot. Pull. There we go. Hey! Beautiful shot. <laughs> oh, I was just going to tell you about that. <laughs> We've been shooting at these clays from the side, but if you're trying to avoid getting hit by a grenade, you're going to be more concerned when they're coming right at you. Yeah, I got it! <laughs> like that. Pull! Very well done. Nice shot. Interestingly, the more realistic oncoming trajectory is a lot easier to hit. So far, this myth is moving in the right direction. Sweet. Pull! <laughs> so, Adam. Yes, sir. To celebrate our newly found skills, I'm going to go over behind that building over there and toss my beret out. No way. Let me shoot at it? You've got one shot. I'll take it. <laughs> I can't tell if I hit. Did I hit it? Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. Let's go take a look. All right. I think you did. There's the proof. <laughs> Dude, I get to keep this some stuff and mounted in my trophy case. Well, what am I gonna wear? Uh, we'll get you another beret. <laughs> okay, you let me know when it arrives. <laughs> Looks pretty innocuous, doesn't it? It is, in fact, pretty small compared to some of the things we've blown up over the history of Mythbusters. But in fact, 
These grenades are incredibly dangerous and have all of us in our bomb techs quite nervous. So in order to properly experiment with these, we have come to a large tract of private land in gold country, east of the Mythbusters shop, where we have thousands of acres of clear land all around us in order to experiment with these. God, I love operating the big machinery. Countless times on this show, we have armored ourselves behind these blast chamber panels to watch dangerous things happen, hopefully right on the other side. Perfect, that's perfect, I love it. But this setup, where our blast chamber panel is bordered on both sides by inch thick plates of steel, this is the most armored we have ever required ourselves to be out in the field. That's because it's not just an explosive pressure wave they're dealing with. The steel body of the grenade is designed to spray lethal fragments at over 25,000 feet per second in every direction. And the nightmare scenario is a misfire. To prepare for that, Jamie's recreated his own nightmare. Normally, bomb disposal robots cost around 100 grand or so. This is my version. Behold the bomb, baby. This is about a $200 remote control truck. I put some servos for arms, a baby head, and most importantly, through this camera, I'll be able to see what's going on from the safety of our reinforced bunker. <laughs> Those are the safety precautions. But what's the first test? Time to wire up a little control. Before we get to shooting guns at these things, they have a timed fuse. All right, go ahead and uh, make it go up. I.e., after you pull the pin and release the spoon, there's a few seconds before they blow up. How many seconds? That's what we need to determine by blowing one up. I knew that was a dud. But this one isn't. Blaine the bomb tech pulls the pin and then traps the spoon of the live grenade in the tube. When it's raised, the spoon will pop. And we're hot! The delay fuse will light and we'll find out exactly how long it takes a grenade to go boom. I feel quite tense about this. We're all ready? Yep. Everybody's clear? Here we go. Going up. I heard the cap go. Wow. I heard stuff hit us. <laughs> that was intense, man. The key reason for this test was to check our timing, because we need to know how much time it takes for the grenade to go off once the spoon pops up. That was five seconds exactly. <laughs> Time for some guns. We're just about to start firing guns at grenades, and we've been thinking about it, and we think one of three things is gonna happen for each of these shots. Either the round will render the grenade inert and maybe decimate it, that's one. Two is it could actually detonate it and explode it in midair. Or three, it could bring enough energy to the equation to actually send the grenade back to where it came. I'm curious as to what the result is actually gonna be. To find out, the setup is simple. All right, then. It's been established an oncoming grenade can be taken out. But with live ammo, they're taking no chances. Three, two, one, go. Perfect. These are the weapons we'll be using on our grenade today. And we'll be firing four kinds of ammunition out of these three weapons. We've got a 308 round, a 45 caliber pistol round and a 12 gauge double aught buck round. Well, it looks pretty dead on. I'll leave the rest to the bomb squad. Now here's where things get interesting. I think the 308 round is going to be by far the most effective round against the grenade. But 
its rifle is by far the most difficult one to hit a grenade in midair with, while at the other end of the spectrum we've got the shotgun. Used for trap shooting, the easiest weapon to use to hit a grenade in midair, but I think this, the double lot buck round, will be the least effective against the grenade. First up, the shotgun and the lightweight buckshot. Okay. Arming. Will it detonate the electronically triggered grenade? Arms. Or render it inert? Three. Or even knock it back 30 feet? Two. Cartoon style. One, fire. Where'd it go? I don't know. It didn't go off. Crap. Yeah. We've got ourselves a situation now. The grenade's delay fuse was remotely triggered, Adam fired the shotgun, and the grenade was knocked off the stand. But there was no explosion. And now, somewhere out there, we have a lot. We have a live grenade. We cannot leave this bunker until we deal with the situation. You want to fire up the baby? Fire. Where'd it go? It didn't go off. But why? Before they fire up the bomb baby, Adam fires up the high-speed camera. Oh, criminy, Jamie, come here. Dude. Watch this. <laughs> no, no more grenade. Well, we, we don't have a live grenade out there. We've got a bunch of dust. Wow. I totally did not see that coming. Darn, I wanted to wake the baby up. <laughs> That's a result. Unbelievably, it seems that you can indeed shoot a live grenade and render it inert. It's amazing. It it disintegrated didn't. the outer casing, and then, even though this was within its five-second range, did not let it explode the cap so the TNT didn't blow up. Wow. I would not have called that. That's amazing. The double-odd buck completely disintegrated the grenade, and that, frankly, surprised us all, because double-odd buck is their little 38 caliber lead balls, and you wouldn't think it would be able to do a whole lot to a steel grenade. But it did. It took it completely apart, and it even took apart the blasting cap before it could go off. An astonishing result. The fuse was lit electronically, but before it could detonate, the buckshot broke up the TNT party. From Hollywood wishful thinking to actual fact. Next up is a 45 caliber round pointed at the grenade. If you remember, only very recently we discovered it's a lot harder to hit a mid-air grenade with one of these than it is with one of those easy shotgun rounds. As to what it's going to do to the grenade, you ready? OK. 45 ACP, three. I expect it to have a very similar effect as the double odd buck. Two. I think that the 45 cal round is going to turn that thing right into dust. One, fire. Hey! It shot it right up the thing. The cap went off, but the grenade didn't. We knocked the grenade off the stand. It looks like we split it in half. So we didn't stop the cap from going off, but we did stop the grenade from blowing up. That's cool. That is very cool. Compared to the buckshot, the 45 millimeter round removed the blasting cap with surgical precision. Either way, it's another myth-confirming result. What's next? Now we're going to bring some real energy to the equation by using a 308 sniper round full metal jacket. There we go. As to what this is going to do to the grenade, I've been wrong for everything so far, so I'm going to say I have no freaking idea. Three, two, one, fire. The grenade went boom. We didn't disintegrate it, it blew up. I think so. Let's look at high speed. OK. The high speed camera, the scalpel, the microscope, the light. 
the multi-tool for tackling time. There it is. And what it shows is... The grenade ignited the second that it penetrated. That is a thing. The blasting cap inside a grenade is actually somewhat shock sensitive. And the 308 round is a very, very high speed round. And that speed translates directly to a certain amount of energy being brought to the equation. And in our case, the 308 round, the very instant it touched the exterior of our grenade, that shock caused the entire thing to detonate early. It was a very, very powerful reaction and an instant one. Yep, it's the second of three potential results and the most common of the cinematic techniques, the mid-air explosion. But let's think about that for a second, because if that ignited the grenade at any closer than 45 feet, which is the kill zone for a grenade, you're dead. Further than 45 feet, it starts to become almost impossible to make a shot like that. Yes, in theory, it's possible, but I would duck. Personally, I would just duck. <laughs> that worked! So to recap our final results, the high-powered rounds, the 308, actually detonated the grenade, which means that if it's within 50 feet of you, you're dead, sucker. But the low-powered rounds, the 45, and especially the shotgun, both rendered the grenades inert. The shotguns even kept the blasting cap from going off. Pretty much the exact polar opposite of what we thought was going to happen.